in heaven we can be together all the time. It's more, more sure. Or oh, there, there's no time limit. Yeah. And each one can have one master to take home. Yeah. <laughs> okay. To come home, to love, yeah, to care for, to have company. Here, even if the master manifested many bodies, you don't even see. And the physical body of you is so big, she can't put it in your pocket to take all the <laughs> Physical body is really different from the heavenly bodies. That the United States has quite often been seen as a leader in the world. Yes. Could you tell us how we have done well in our job there and how our leadership could do it even better? Yes, I really like it that the United States was or still is leading in the humanitarian uh, field, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I'm very pleased with that and I wish that the American continue in this trend and more and more humanitarian efforts, less and less war because only love can convert people. Only love can touch people's heart. Unconditional love, brotherly help, will touch people's heart. Where do the terrorists come from? Where do the resistance come from? Because people are in want. And the more we frighten them, corner them, the more they resist, yes? In Vietnam, we say, even the earworm, yes. if you step on him, his head would turn around against you. This means that even harmless people, sometimes if they are cornered, they will become more aggressive, you know, more resistant. Yes. You see in Korea, the South Korean president, God bless him, he has just went to heaven. He initiated the policy called sunshine policy. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? Yes, yes. yes. That's from a folk story. Like, the more sun, <laughs> the more the guy open his shirt and get open and, you know, if more cold, more wind, yes, then he... Covers himself up. Contrasts more within himself, yeah? Yes. And protect himself, cover himself, and doesn't show himself, doesn't smile, doesn't, you know, open himself up. So they're using sunshine policy. And because of that policy, the two Korea are getting better and better, more peaceful. You see, people can be reunited, family, all tears of happiness are flowing. Yes? Yes. So I want to tell your people, learn from history. Learn from the lessons of love. Only love and friendship can foster love and friendship. Anything that frightens people, corner people, result in war, trouble, and more trouble. And sometimes in anger, people do all kind of things which they themselves may also regret. When your new president, namely President Obama, came to office, you have asked me a similar question. Say, what kind of message do I have for your president? I say only one sentence. Love expands. Fear contrasts. And love unites. Fear alienates. It's always like that from time immemorial. It's not my wisdom. Yes. I just learned it from all the wise counsel of the elderly of our planet. And it has always worked. Have war and peace strategy. War strategy is easy. Just send everybody out, killing each other. You know, all the youth, the beautiful, handsome Americans against another country's youth and handsome other natives. Yes? But love and assistance and help will always touch people's heart for a long time to come. America should use their power, their financial privilege to help the less developed country? Yes. To help the underprivileged rather than have an army to fight, have an army for peace. Yes, yes, yes. You will see if your people concentrate 
with all your financial favor from God, yeah? Use that to help others, to help all the weak and needy country. You will see. You will see. You don't have to fight. You will win all war. Yes. You win all the people's heart. War anybody can make. Peace, it takes great courageous leadership to materialize it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Be constructive, not always criticizing. Any government, we have to work fully with it. Remember, Americans, last time the voting season, you know, between now President Obama and uh, Senator Clinton? Yes. yes. Hillary Clinton? Yes. Yes. They are both almost, you know, like neck to neck in popularity. But at the end, only one of them should be running. Otherwise, the Democrat uh, voting will be too divided. And then they might lose it to the other candidate of the other party. Do you remember? Yes, Master. Ah, so they sit together, talk together, and Hillary Clinton got out. And not only she got out, she went all out of herself to support President Obama, yes? Mm -hmm. yes and ma'am. yes, we can, she said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, at that time, not many of her followers really wanted this situation because it looked like she could be also winning. But you see what I mean? They put the interests of the nation first. Yes? Yes. They united together to show the world that we are grown up. Yes, Mr. That uh, we are Americans, that uh, we work for America. We don't work for personal glory, gain, or lose. Do you understand? Yes, Master. That is what I call great statesman or woman. Otherwise, we get nowhere, okay? Yes, Master. Now, I tell you a story to illustrate my point. Long, long time ago, yeah, there was a country that experienced one dictator after another, or one tyrant after another, yes? And there was the last one, the one that is existing, seemed to be the worst one compared to all the previous ones. But there was one old lady who had been living through these dynasties of tyrants, go into the temple every day and praying for the present tyrant to live long, 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 as long as possible. People hated her, you know? Some scolded her and asked her why she's like a traitor of the country. The whole country is hating this dictator and tyrant, and she's the only one go to the temple and go to the church every day to pray for his longevity. And why? So she explains, she said, well, when I was younger, there was a tyrant, and we all feel that he's very bad, and I pray for him to be down, and then he was down quick. <laughs> and then came I'm another one, was then the one that I prayed to be down, and then I prayed for him to be down also, and then he was down, down with him, and then another one came. I was then the first two. And then now we have this one, because I also pray that the third one also down with him. Yeah, I pray to heaven to punish him, make him disappear. And then he disappear, and this one we have now, the fourth. It's worse than all three previous ones. So this time I don't dare to pray <laughs> <laughs> down with the dictator anymore. I pray for him to live long, because I'm afraid if he's down, maybe another one come worse than this one. You see what I mean? Yes. Yes. Sometimes we have to pay, sometimes we have to undergo fire, sometimes we have to pass the test of heaven. So whatever it is, let it be. We can only do it all in peace, all in peace and pay. Master, you've spoken before that trees have a soul, and yes. uh, many trees are now perishing due to global warming. Hmm. So hmm. my question is, um, can you please tell us if trees are like animals, you know, that they're closer to God and that, you know, when they die, they, they go immediately to heaven? Or is it that they have a different evolution from animals? Yes, each one has different evolution, of course, no? But the trees who perished by helping humankind 
by shading uh, the hot planet will go straight to heaven, of course. In each tree, there's a soul, and that soul will go back to where it comes from. Now, our planet has lost many animal species, and they won't come back. The reason animals came here in the first place was because we were in need of their help. In the beginning, we did not have much need, as most people were vegetarian. Long, long ago, huh? Yes. Now, later on, as we developed more appetite for many edible things on this earth, then we need more animals to propagate seed and fruit, uh, to air the earth, yes, and to disperse different seeds and different agriculture products on earth. And then the animals came. And then we begin to fight with each other more for food and survival, since we know the taste of food. And then other animals have to come down also to balance the uh, atmosphere of our planet, because animals bring down love onto this planet. Where we were losing love, the animals, we have to feel it, yes? in this empty space of our love, as our love lesson, lesson and lesson, because we fight with each other, because we become uh, disharmonized with each other due to shortage or due to greed for food, and then from food, other necessity, and from other necessity, more for power and control. So we lose more and more of the quality of love as we generate more hatred and competitiveness and jealousy into the atmosphere that we live. So more animals have to incarnate into our planet in order to help us to balance that. But now we're killing many of them almost every day. Two, three hundred species are lost every day, and they will not come back. Even if they wanted to, they will not be allowed to come back. That's why we see so many um, animals extinct, yes? Endangered species are already extinct. We will never see them again because they came here to help, but we harm them instead. So heaven will not allow them to return. And the less animals, the less love atmosphere on our planet. And also, if we generate more hatred the way we live, then we'll be in trouble. Do you understand me? Yes, Master. Uh, Master, yes. Um, I just want to recount an experience I had with the trees when I yes. was in Belgium. I lived yes. on uh, around a farming area, and there were yes. a lot of wooded patch areas. And yes. one day I was walking through one of these wooded areas, and uh, I felt that the trees in there was like alive and the air was moist and it felt like everything was alive and it had a cleansing effect because when I walked out I felt like I just walked through a, a different dimension or something uh -huh. and then I was like wow and well and then I started looking out for more forest to walk in <laughs> but, <laughs> That's right. yeah yes. it's you did right did right that's why a lot of people like to walk through the forest, yes? Yeah. In Chinese terms, they call it uh, like forest bathing, you know? It's truly yeah. because they experience similar to what you experience, you know, like the cleansing effect of the trees. Not because of the oxygen that they emit, but the love from them, because they never know any harm, intention, in their being. You see, all they have is love and protection. Yes. Yes. That's why I made for all of them a poem recently. I hope I have a time to recite it for you. I call in all the planetary species and all the forests, please, uh, please take care of themselves and protect humankind in this hour of need. Thank you, Master. I cried so much when I wrote that. 
So I wasn't sure whether I could recite it because every time I tried to read it again, even just to correct or revise, I cry so much. Yeah, because I feel their response, I feel their love, and their frustration also for us. Yes, yes, they have just love. That's why you feel good. I'm. 即使我们不伤人家，不过我们给人家生气也不好。不是说去伤人、去打人才是不好呢，啊，要越来越细心到这样子啊。我们知道做什么事对别人不舒服，我们绝对不做就对了。很简单嘛，有两个方法而已。一个方法做就给人家高兴，另外一个就给人家生气。有时候人家不讲起来，吞下去，因为。嗯、不好意思讲啊，我是讲久了，你你你不听，他也不不不想再讲下去了。不过我们不能惹人家生气，我们知道了不能故犯，明知不能故犯，因为我们给人家上心，给人家生气也是一种暴力的。我告诉你，不是说去打人才是暴力，不是说去杀人才是暴力，不是说去偷财，给人家生气也是偷人家运气啊，偷人家那个快乐的时刻。给人家烦恼，人家生出来一百年而已，啊，好时刻不多，啊，那个美好的时间很小，你还要冲进去，还多偷几个时刻，给人家多烦恼，世界烦恼多，高兴小了，是不是？又不能给人家高兴，又这边故意给人家烦，是不对的，了解吗？嗯，所以暴力就是这样。直接要指得清楚，不是明知故犯，去外面找人家麻烦，我是挑战啊，我是故意给人家弄，知道人家不会怎么样，然后故意这样子做下去，看看你怎么样，看能做到哪里这样子，那这样子是不对 ，OK？ 还是有一种送恶的心，有的时候我们认为啊、哦，我不小心的，没有这个事，没有这个不小心的事。所有我们做的东西，如果我们不小心，就也是有那种意志力里面做的，听懂不懂 ？Subconsciously， 啊，在里面不好的，才这样小心做不好的事情。当然，当然不小心总比故意好啊。不过我们要修行的，要多考虑，要多努力。但我们不可能不小心伤害人就对了，这样才就说有修行。这样才是说好心，了解吗？嗯，所以不是吃素，为了打坐就够了，不够，持戒要紧。嗯，佛《金刚经》有好几个嘛，啊，不是，啊，持戒，忍耐，哈、啊，精进，禅定，智慧，啊，有几个啊？懂了哈。有六个哈、啊、，OK， 你们能指哪几个？举手给我看，统统六个举手给我看，没有，好几十年了还这个样子，好，算你们坦白，还好没有说谎，哦，最少不犯戒，不故意啊啊 ，OK， 那这样也算进步，那我们越来越好嘛 ，OK。啊，越来越要细心，越越越来越要有慈悲心，慈悲心大小都是慈悲心的啊，就就像放生一百只那个麻雀一样，哎，不能说它太小，算什么？我以前住在一个寺庙啊，他们不杀那个蟑螂 ，OK， 不过他们买那种粘的那个盘子放的，蟑螂要。跑到那边，每一个都讲我哇哇叫，跑粘在粘在那边，或是粘这边没办法动了，哇，刀就变成白了，我看了就不管了，就我说你们这怎么这样子做，他就说我们没杀他们呢、啊，我说这个比杀还要糟糕啊，我说我们直接就要吃清楚，不是说一点点，听懂吗？这个是犯戒一点点而已。一点点怎么行嘛啊！然后他们就后来觉得师傅讲的对，就把那一盘子拿走了。嚯！我问他们，你能不能想象，如果是你的啊，是你的
，然后人家放一个很大的盘，这个是小小蟑螂，当然是小小碗嘛。那你这个大，然后人家放很大的一个碗，然后你在那边，每年在那边整天讲，到死不生不死那个，你想喜欢不喜欢啊？一想就知道了嘛，啊？一想到那个蟑螂那个位置哈、啊，换一下我们就知道怎么做，你不用跟师傅学，不用学孔老那么多啊？孔子说什么？什么不至于人呢？再说一遍。是啊，念那么清楚，<笑>念那么清楚啊！有时候你们做事都不细心，懂不懂？认为自己我工作了，不管谁啊？不是这样，不是这样。上也是送恶，了解吗？吵闹到别人，不考虑到别人。不想到别人那那种感觉，就是有恶心就对了。有时候，比方说那个蟑螂，它死一死就很快，总比那个在那边那个那个死的慢慢死那个不死不活那个一年在那边这样子，不是很残忍吗？啊，也是一种惩罚人家啊，惩罚了慢慢死那种哇，很痛苦，是不是？万一是我们呢？你能不能想象是我呢？是你的啊？一样嘛，是不是？哇，残忍残忍！所以人啊，修行有好几种程度啊。所以你们修行跟师傅要真的很考虑细心啊，一滴一点都不能犯那种暴力 ，OK？ 不能给人家生气，不能故意的。那难免的情况是没办法说了，就是不能这样知道，又还在那边做，了解哈？这样不能说哦，我有修行，会惭愧，会丢脸啊！哦，当我徒弟这样，我会丢脸，我真的会惭愧，我觉得我自己教教训不好，教你们教不好，我认为是自己的错。不过你们也不能这样子赖下去嘛，是不是？嗯，做什么要考虑啊 ？OK。比方说你在家里修理房子哈。当然，晚上才有空啊，哈！晚上白天是一样，门又关起来，不给隔壁被吵啊，是不是？如果你住在一个人的隔壁，然后他天天这样吵吵打打，然后讲话都很大声这样，你喜欢吗？啊？哦，有时候你工作整天回来想休息一下，一开门就不能开，一开就吵吵闹闹这个样子，你精神也崩坏啊，不舒服啊，只想有。那个看到隔壁的脸上也不能讲话什么嘛，是不是？认为 OK 一天没关系，明天都会好，然后后天会好，后后天会好，结果一次这样继续下去，即使几天人家也受不了，了解吗？嗯，比方说而已，小事情而已哈。嗯，那有时候那个车子啊开在门口哈、啊，人家的门口一直开呢不关呢、啊，那个堵气一直喷出来在人家那个窗户那边呢、啊。然后吵啊，人家也受不了，那个也不对。你们来这边晚上太晚了，而且车子蹦来蹦去，那个那个门啊，蹦得很大声，也不对，应该关得很静静的，然后出去外面远一点，比较没有人家的地方，才停下来再关。其实关一点点静静，它也关得好，不应该这样子蹦一下，了解吗？嗯 ，OK， 懂啦 t h a n k you， 嗯。让人家生气也是一种暴暴力，了解哈？挑战吗？给人家心痛啊？啊，给人家头痛？那不是跟人家打一样吗？不是打人一样吗？啊，打人人家还有机会可以再打你，要笑气一点。如果你打他，他打你，他要笑气一点。那结果你你那个给他头痛，给给人家生气这个样子，人家又不又不好意思讲话的话，就更更烦闷，更痛苦，了解？